Janome. Welcome, everybody. It's month four already of the Janome Block of the Month Blitz 2 quilt. How are you doing on all your blocks? We are making such great progress. I have loved seeing what you're posting. I've received many messages and emails from you all, and it's been so great to connect across the miles while you're working on your blocks and your projects. So welcome to the studio. I'm Kimberly Einmo, and you're here today with Mr. Kim behind the camera. Hi, everybody. <laughs> he always does his signature wave. And of course, the world famous Cheetos here. We didn't even have to call him. He always knows when the lights go on in the studio that it's time for him to be part of the action. So he's here, wants to say hi to everybody. And we are going to have a lot of fun today. We're gonna to do some different things, focus on some new techniques. We are focusing on blocks G, H, and I. So you'll want to go to Janome.com or the link that you see right here and you're going to want to download month four of the material so you can follow right along and uh, have everything that you need. We're going to jump right in. I'm going to show you where the blocks are in the quilt. Here's block G and block H and block I is right here. And this is the one we're gonna focus on last because we're gonna be doing some new things today with those units, but aren't these really cute little spools? I love that block. Anyway, we'll start with block G. And really, it's, it's a fairly easy block. There's some pressing techniques we have to talk about, but really, you're going to be making just four flying geese and the rest are all half square triangle units. There's really not even any squares in this block, just triangles. So as you can see, we are increasing skills with each block that we're making. So come on around here, let's talk about what you're gonna need. Remember way back in the beginning with all the things that we cut with the violet and the grape, you're gonna to need to pull those units out because the first thing you're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to cut four side B triangles from your ruler. Side B is the mint green side, and we're gonna to need to cut four of your grape units, side B triangles from your two and a half inch strips or the leftover pieces from way back in the beginning, we need four side B triangles of our violet, and then you'll also need four side B triangles of your lavender. So once you get those cut, and it's all listed right on your handouts right here, you're also going to need 12 side B background fabric triangles. So I have six here and six here. And the last thing you're gonna to need to cut from your lemonade and your pansy are um, two uh, side A, and that's the magenta color. Now you'll need side A of your ruler. I'll just show you again. When you're cutting these, you need side A units from your two and a half inch strips of your lemonade and your pansy. And that's it. That's really all we're going to need. So once you get all of this cut, let's meet over at the sewing machine and let's dive in and get sewing. We're at the sewing machine and getting ready to sew. Make sure that you have 50 weight cotton in your machine. And if you haven't changed your needle in a while, now is the time to do it. Start with a fresh new needle and it'll make your piecing even that much easier. Make sure to use your favorite quarter inch piecing foot so that you get that perfect scant quarter inch because here with so many diagonal seams going on, the more accurate you can sew that perfect scant quarter inch seam allowance, the easier it will be to have your block go together. So let's talk about what we're gonna do first. We're gonna make half square triangles. And as you can see here with this block, we're gonna start with these half square triangles right in the center. We're gonna need four of your violet side B triangles and two of your grape side B triangles and two of your lavender side B triangles. So the first thing is we're going to make four half square triangles. I already have mine put together here into units with the grape and the, and the uh, violet and grape and lavender. 
Then we're also going to need to make some more half square triangles with the background fabric. So here I have my uh, grape fabric and my background fabric triangles, the side B triangles, and my lavender and background fabric all put together ready to sew. So we are making a total of eight half square triangles. So let's get those sewn, pressed, trimmed, and ready for the next step. Now we want to talk about our half square triangles with the background fabric and the lavender and the background fabric and the grape. All of these are pressed toward, the seams are pressed toward the solidish fabrics or the color. Another way to say it is we're pressing all the seams away from the background fabric. So once you do that, you're good to go with these four half square triangles. But the, the half square triangles with the violet, the dark purple, just like we did the last time in the last installment of the Block of the Month Blitz, we took these half square triangles and we pressed one unit of each in a different direction. So here we have, if you'll look at these, we have the lavender and the violet, but when we press the seams, we've got one seam going towards the violet, and with this one, we have one seam going towards the lavender. The same thing for the, the violet and grape. We want one seam going towards the violet and one seam, seam allowance pointing towards the grape. This is going to allow these to snuggle together when we put these, when they get sewn together in the block, they will snuggle beautifully. So that's what we're doing right here. Actually, this is gonna go over here. There we go. And that's how we're going to do it. But you want one of each. And now we're going to make our flying geese units. Now it's time with your favorite furry felines help <laughs> to make your flying geese units for this block. You're gonna need two of your side A triangles of your pansy, two of side A triangles of your lemonade, and you're gonna need the remaining eight side B triangles of your background fabric. So through the magic of pre-recording, we, I have already made these, I've made my flying geese units and trimmed them up to two and a half by four and a half inches unfinished. I've got two with the pansy, two with the lemonade, and now what we need to do is lay out this block and sew some units together. But it's not going to go together like you think it might. I'm going to make it even easier for you. Now the trick to this block is keeping your handouts pretty handy so you can lay out your units exactly as shown. If you flip over to page two, it shows it a little more clearly. And ultimately, we are going to be making four patches, again, because that's the simplest way to put this block together. But when you first lay out all your parts and pieces, it can look a little confusing. So take your time when you're laying your pieces out, and let's talk about that right now. I have laid out all my pieces and taken my time and been very careful to follow the red arrows right on the handout to make sure that they're right in the orientation so everything will snuggle. And you have all these parts and pieces and you think, oh, where do I start? Well, the first thing to remember is we're not sewing these four units together in the center. We're gonna sew them separately so that this is going to be a, a block or a square, this is going to be a block, this one is going to turn into one block, and this is going to be a block. The first thing we do is set your, or leave your flying geese units setting by themselves, and we're going to carefully pick up our half square triangle units, and you should match lavender to lavender, here's another lavender to lavender, grape to grape, grape to grape, and we're gonna sew these together and then press following the direction of the red arrows on your handout, and then we're going to add the flying geese units. So let's go ahead and get our little half square triangles sewn together, and then we'll come back here and I'll show you a trick for lining up the point of your flying geese with your half square triangle sewn units.
Now, as you're following along with the red arrows on your handouts, you'll notice that I have a little double-ended arrow. This is one of those places where I recommend pressing your seams open. You don't have to, but I found it worked really, really well. So if you have a strip stick or some like mini quilters pressing ham, now's the time to get it out. I really like the strip stick and I'm going to put a link there if you want to find out more about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to press these four half square triangles closed first, setting the seam, don't forget about that. And then we're going to lay these over the strip stick and press these seams open. The strip stick allows you to get your finger in there, open the seam, and then not flip any of the other seams back the other way. So it makes it really simple and it gives it a really nice press and it makes it very, the whole unit's very flat and pretty. And as you can see, we've got our quarter inch seam allowances left over and that's exactly what we want. So let's get these pressed open and then we're gonna go back and sew these together with our flying geese units so that we'll have four, four and a half inch square units and then we can easily assemble our big four patch. Let's get these done. Two more, will only take just a few seconds here. Give it a shot of steam if you want and make sure then press it flat from the other side. There you go. And now the last one. You're gonna be really glad you did this on these particular units because it makes it really easy to get a perfect point right at the tip of your flying geese units and that's exactly what we want. Okay, I have my little units sewn together. Let's go back over and sew them with our flying geese. I still have great help in the studio here. Cheeto is really trying to be helpful today, aren't you, sweetie? All right, now we need to put our flying geese units with our double half square triangle units, and we need to make units that look just like this. <laughs> he really is being a help. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll just kind of move over here and work around him. You all are probably laughing watching this. But what we need to do is use some thin pins. I like these flathead flower pins. I think I've talked about them before. You want the ones, if you can find them, that have the 0 .045 shank. I'm so sorry about the help today. You want the skinny shanks. They're the blue ones, the blue, light blue, dark blue, flathead flower pins. Those are gonna work great and help you get really perfect points here. And I do recommend pinning at this particular stage. What we want to do is we want to pin these units together. And all we're going to do is take these, put them right sides together. I like to do it with the flying geese unit wrong side up, but we're sewing with the flying geese unit closest to you and the other unit on the bottom. And then we're going to take our flathead flower pin and we're gonna put it right through the intersection of the um, where the seams come together. And then we can pin through the open seam right there, right where the intersection is, where that quarter inch seam allowance is. And then we're gonna snuggle those units up together and take a little bite into the fabrics. And now we're going to sew these. And we're gonna sew all four of these together. I've already got four more all ready to go here. Again, the magic of pre-recording, but I haven't sewn them yet. So we're gonna stitch across these with the flying geese unit wrong side up. We're gonna get these sewn and pressed and meet back here so we can put our block together. Now, after you've sewn that seam, it's a good idea to just check those points because now's your chance. If they're not perfect, you can rip those out and make them right. But I think we've done it. And that's partly because we did open that seam between the half square triangles. It makes it really easy to get some really perfect points right there. And your block is gonna look just amazing. So let's go ahead and get these pressed 
follow the direction of your red arrows, get them pressed, and then we're ready to put our four patch block together. We're back. Did you press your seams open? This is another good place to press those seams open. Otherwise, there's a lot of bulk right there. So I pressed them open and now I've got my four, four and a half inch squares all laid out. It's time to put the block together, just like we've done many times before. It's a giant four patch. You're done with block G. Isn't it pretty? All those little half square triangles and some flying geese come together to make a really pretty, elaborate, kind of pinwheel type block. I just love it. I hope you like this one too. Now it's time to move on to block H. So we're gonna meet over at the cutting table and we're gonna go back and talk about all the units you're gonna to need to cut your pretty sunny yellow block H and we're gonna get moving. So now go back to page one of your handouts and we're gonna be tackling the cutting for block H. Now block G and block H have a lot in common. They are both constructed with four flying geese units and eight half square triangle units, but they look incredibly different. And that's because of the fabric placement within each little unit or in each section and how we rotate the blocks. So while they may have the same number of similar units to construct those blocks, they are really, really different. And here is your block H, and it's really pretty, kind of like a sunshine block or a star block. And it looks like these are trapezoids. These are really just your flying geese units, and your center is made up of four half square triangles, and then you have half square triangles in the outer corners. So what we're going to do is take a look at what you're going to need here, and if Mr. Kim will come around and I've already got everything cut, we'll just go over what's on your handout. From your background fabric, you're going to need four side A triangles and four side B triangles. Then you really don't even have much to cut when it comes in, into the lemon and the orange because we pre-cut all of those units, all of those side B triangles way back in month one. So somewhere in your stash of stuff, <laughs> you're gonna have a baggie or a pin through some half square triangles. We're gonna need those now. So I even have written there the side B triangles that you cut previously and I've listed them here so you don't have to recut them. They were already done in the, in the preparation month. And finally, you need four side B triangles of flame, kind of the, the lava looking color, but it's called flame. This is what we're gonna need. Let's go to the machine and let's construct all of our units to make this beautiful block. Now this is a block that isn't assembled like a giant four patch. This is really assembled like a giant uneven nine patch. <laughs> and we'll get to that. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you just yet. Let's talk about what we do need. The first thing you're going to want to do are make your little half square triangles with your background fabric and your flame. Make four of those and press the seams all toward the flame fabric. Get four of those done, be sure and trim those dog ears. The next thing we need to do are make some half square triangles with your lemon and your orange. You're going to need four of those and here we're going to want to press all of the seam allowances towards the orange. Now why is this? because we've got these blocks rotated in such a way that it makes a pinwheel. So let me show you what I mean. We've got a pinwheel going here, and if all of the seam allowances are in the same direction, meaning you've pressed them towards the orange, when we go to assemble this unit together for the center of the block, they will all snuggle together when we make a little four patch right here. So make sure that you make those half square triangles and trim off the dog ears, and then we'll have our center unit. 
The last thing we want to talk about is making your flying geese units. Now here we're using our background fabric as your side A triangles. And we have for each flying geese unit, we have an orange and a lemon. And it's very, very important that you watch the orientation. The orange color is always going to be on the right and the lemon color is always going to be on the left. So here's the unit already sewn and I'm turning it towards you so you can see exactly. You need four flying geese units that look just like this. Make sure and take a moment to trim off their dog ears and square them up if they need squared up. But once you get all those half square triangles and your flying geese units sewn, we'll be ready to put this together like a giant four patch. Make sure and take just a few moments to trim off those dog ears, maybe even screw these up, make sure they're two and a half by four and a half inches unfinished, get all your flying geese made, and then we'll have all of our parts ready to go so that we can assemble this uneven nine patch. All of your half square triangles and your flying geese have been sewn and you've even put together that center four patch, which is a cute little pinwheel with your orange and lemon fabrics. You made sure that you've trimmed off all of your dog ears and lay out your block so it really is like a nine patch. There's actually nine pieces. What you're going to do is you're going to sew these half square triangles to this flying geese unit and your half square triangles to this flying geese unit. And finally, you're going to sew these flying geese to your center little um, pinwheel unit. And so that we'll have three rows. We'll have this row, the middle row, and the bottom row. So again, through the magic of pre-recording, I've gone ahead and done that. So now all we have to do is add the rows together. So just start with one of them and I recommend pinning here, pinning at the intersections so you get nice, beautiful points. Once you've done that and you've sewn it, add the other side and be sure to press the seams. And then you'll be all done with block H. Block H is in the books. You're done with block H. Now, didn't that go together just so easily? You are really learning and growing your skills so that you can put together different units with lots of different size triangles to create some really spectacular blocks. Again, every one I make I think is my favorite. What do you think, Mr. Kim? Me too. <laughs> All right, we need to move on to block I. So get everything that you're going to need, get your strips to make block I. We'll meet back here and we'll talk about the cutting because this one's a little different. We have one more block to do in month four and it's block I. It's this really pretty spinning spools block. And this is something that's going to stretch your skills just a little more because we're not making half square triangles and we're not making flying geese. But I want to show you some of the different ways to use the flying geese and half square triangle ruler so you'll feel comfortable branching out and cutting other units like trapezoids or parallelograms or whatever. It's gonna be fun. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through every step. You are going to need your handouts and keep page one close at hand so you can follow along. But come on around here and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use the ruler and all the units we're going to cut for block I. Follow along on your cutting chart and we're gonna take it really slow and I'm gonna walk you through every step of the process. 
To start with, you're going to need a one and a half inch strip of your background fabric. You're going to need your maraschino strip, which is kind of this lighter red and your cherry strip. I've already cut my two and a half inch squares from those. You'll also need your uh, lemonade and your pink strips, and we'll cut those in just a moment. Let's focus on the background fabric. The first thing you're going to need are eight one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles. So I've already got those cut here. That's pretty self-explanatory. But remember, you'll want to use your jelly roll ruler and the mint green lines. There's actually lines two and a half inches in length by one and a half inches in width. Use those lines to cut those rectangles. Once you've done that, we are going to need to cut some one and a half inch side B triangles. And you'll need your flying geese ruler with side B right sides up. Now, because there's no one and a half inch line here, we're going to use the lines on our mat to help us make these cuts accurately. So what we're going to do is I'm lining up my strip with the lines on my mat. Then I can use side B of the ruler and I'm going to use the two inch line and align it with the mat. The strip is underneath. As long as my two inch line is lined up on the two inch line or the, this line on the mat and I have my selvage edge cut off and I'm using the the edge of the ruler with the edge of the strip and the flat top of the ruler along the top of the strip, I can go ahead and make some cuts with side B. And these will end up being one and a half inch triangles. See that? There you go. And I have two of them there because my strip was actually cut double. I have this doubled over. There are two of my little units. Now we'll take the ruler and we'll rotate it around and we'll line it up on the, the flat edge on the bottom of the strip. Again, keep it aligned with the lines on your mat. And then I'm going to go looking for the diagonal edge on the strip and the two inch line on the ruler should align with the line on the mat. And it does. Good job, Mr. Kim. You're doing a great job with the video. And then you make your cut right like that. So there's two more of your little one and a half inch um, half square triangles or side B triangles. Rotate the ruler back around, line it up here. Again, I'm lining up the two inch line on the ruler with the line on the mat and that will allow me to cut. You need a total of 16 side B triangles that will be one and a half inches. They're cute little itty bitty baby <laughs> triangles. They're actually really cute. Don't forget you need two two and a half inch maraschino squares and two two and a half inch cherry squares. Once you've cut those, put those aside. Now we're done with our one and a half inch strip of background. Now we'll pull out the pink and the lemonade. And you can actually cut these layered if you want, or you can just do one color at a time, but I'm gonna go ahead and layer these. And we are going to be using the Jelly Roll or Precision Pre-Cuts Ruler to cut a unit that is exactly five and a half inches by one, I'm sorry, five and a quarter inches by one and a half inches. Again, follow along on your handouts. Let's do five and a quarter inches by one and a half. Here's the one and a half inch line and here's the five and a quarter. So let's go ahead and cut those and I'm just gonna cut it here first and just go all the way there and then I'm gonna just rotate this so I can get a nice clean cut while you're watching on camera and we're gonna do one and a half by five and a quarter. Here we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and just slide the ruler up there. 
This piece we don't use for this project, so toss it aside. Now we have our one and a half by five and a quarter inch rectangles. Now that we have these one and a half by five and a quarter inch rectangles cut from pink and lemonade, now we're going to use side A of the ruler in a very unconventional way. Um, it's just because we need a trapezoid. And what I'm gonna do is layer these together to make it easier to cut them all at once. And we're gonna use side A of the ruler. And can you see that there? But this time we're going to go look for the two and a half inch line on the ruler. You can see it right there with the little arrow. And we're gonna line the two and a half inch line along the bottom of these rectangles, corner to corner. You want to make sure that it's centered on the rectangle so this the ruler itself goes all the way to each corner and then we're going to hold the ruler in place and we're going to easily trim off these little side triangles that we're not going to use for anything this time so make sure and put these away these are too small for anything uh, for this particular project put them in your scrap bag or for dog beds or something now you're left with these beautiful trapezoids and this is what's going to help us make our little spools for our blocks so this is what they're going to look like and now we're going to get ready and move over to the sewing machine and put these units together this block may seem a little daunting Maybe you've never worked with units like this, but I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna go step by step. We're gonna do the easy stuff first, get it out of the way, and then we're gonna make those funky little uh, side pieces or the spool ends. You'll see it's really not bad at all because when you get these together, they make the cutest little spools. I could just see this as a whole uh, bunch of these for an outside border on a different quilt. I think once you learn to make these little spools, you'll find a lot of other uses besides this block because they really are kind of fun to make. All right, so get your cherry squares and your maraschino squares and put those one and a half by two and a half inch background rectangles on either side. That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna sew those background, background rectangles to either side of the squares, and I want you to press the seams in towards the squares, in toward the maraschino and cherry squares. Get those done, and then we're gonna start on those funny little units. We are really having a geometry lesson today, aren't we? Because we're making these trapezoids, but we're gonna turn them into long rectangles with our half square triangle, um, little side triangles, right? So we're gonna be sewing the hypotenuse side. <laughs> and Mr. Kim always gets really excited because he says it's the hippopotamus side. But isn't it kind of fun to know that we're putting that high school geometry to good use? So are you enjoying this, Mr. Kim? Very much. <laughs> All right, here's what we've got. Come on in, get a little closer because I wanna show you what we're gonna do. We have those trapezoids that we cut from the one and a half by five and a quarter inch rectangles. And we also have those little teeny tiny, really cute little side B triangles of our background fabric. Now, it's similar to making flying geese here. We're gonna sew one side on at a time, but here you don't have to worry about any points. We are going to match up point to point and flat edge to this edge up here. So when you put your uh, background triangle, those little teeny tiny triangles on top, it will look just like this. And I think Mr. Kim is doing a great job getting this on video. So you can see that the flat edge aligns across the top of that uh, trapezoid. And we're gonna stitch from the corner, the tip of the corner right here, all the way down. When we're done sewing all of those on, we'll go back and you'll add the other side 
and again sew with these little triangles on top so you can see if they shift or anything happens and this time when we put it under the presser foot we'll be sewing from the bottom all the way up to the corner of this point right there so we want to add these on to our trapezoids you'll want four of each of the pink and four of each of the lemonade that's how we're using up all 16 of those one and a half inch side b triangles so let's just use our beautiful scant quarter inch seam allowance and we'll get these sewn all right remember you want to put this with the little background fabric triangle on top and if you want to use a little leader or ender you can but go ahead, if you have a nice sharp needle, let your feed dogs do the work. Again, go slow. These are a little hold, hard to hold on to, and you wanna be really careful to keep them aligned and straight. And I'm gonna go ahead and start right at that corner and go all the way down to the bottom. We'll fold this over like this on top. See how beautifully it lines up here. Kind of like a little puzzle. It just lines up right on top of that trapezoid unit. And then you can sew, and I'm using the right edge of my presser foot to align these. And I'm only gonna do four total, but you would really need a total of eight. All right, see that? And now you can actually turn it around and just sew the other side. I'll do one of them here for you. And then uh, you'll get, you can get to sewing, but you actually don't have to stop and press here until both sides are sewn on because you're not worried about the point this time. There we go. Wonderful. These actually are pretty easy, and isn't it fun to try something new? So here we go. I've already made my other uh, two units of my um, lemonade, and I've made my two pink units, and I've already pressed them. It's ultra important to remember when you're pressing to press the seams out towards the small uh, background fabric, side B triangles, never press in towards the trapezoid, always press the seams, all of them out away from the trapezoid. Go ahead and make four pink units and four um, lemonade units, and then we'll be ready to put our little spools together. I told you this block isn't bad at all. It's just something probably new to you. So now what we're going to do are we're gonna take those little units where we sewed the square between the two rectangles your maraschino color, if you're following along with the solidish colors I used, you'll take your maraschino unit and you'll pair it up with your little lemonade units. And then you'll take your cherry or the darker red unit and pair it up with your pink units. What we're going to do here is about the most simple thing we've done all day. We're going to flip these units right sides together on top of the little rectangle and square units and we're going to match up the ends the raw edge you don't even have to pin here it's so easy and now we're just going to sew with our beautiful scant quarter inch seam allowance and here we go just uh, keep the edges aligned line them up you can hold them with your hand and just Keep them aligned, raw edges all lined up nice and even. And then you'll see what happens here. I'll hold it up for you. Oh, it's perfect. It aligns perfectly with the, the square, the red square. So now we're gonna add the other side. Again, all we're doing is putting it right sides together with the long skinny rectangle unit on top aligning the raw edges together there we go and just make sure you put the raw edges together that will center those intersections it'll work beautifully you'll see make that seam 
And now we're going to go ahead and press these so they're nice and flat. Oh, those are so cute. I just love these little blocks. Go ahead and make two with the maraschino and the lemonade and two with the cherry and the pink. And then we're ready to put our four patch together. My guess is that you're having the most fun today with this block. I know I am. This is really fun and it goes together much quicker than you would think with all those little pieces what you were cutting in the beginning. Anyway, now we're going to lay out our cutesy cute little uh, spools just as they're shown on your handout, on page two of your handout, and make sure that they're rotated in the proper direction. We're gonna sew these like a giant four patch. We're gonna put the block together. You're in the home stretch for month four. Follow along, get your sewn, and we'll meet back to wrap up. Mr. Kim just makes me laugh. He's behind the camera saying things like, uh, quiet on the set, lights, camera, sound check. <laughs> and now he's turning bright red because I'm teasing him. <laughs> and he's sticking his tongue out. Oh my goodness, the antics in this studio. So now you've seen me sew all of my seams. I've got that big four patch to assemble and I've put a pin right in the center because I want a perfect point, right? Where all eight of those fabrics come together. But if you've pressed following along with the red arrows, you'll see that all these seams snuggle beautifully and it makes it really easy to put the block together. So let's just sew this together, shall we? And um, we'll put it together. We'll do our last seam for month four. I can't believe it. This went so quickly today. There we go. Pull the pin out. And we're going to realign here the other seams to make sure everything is going to snuggle. And here we go. It's going to be perfect, I can tell. All right. And we're going to do the big reveal right now. It's perfect! Yay! We've almost got like a little teensy tiny pinwheel going there in the center. That's one of the charms about this block. Let's meet back over at the cutting table. We'll wrap up everything for month four. We'll talk about month five. And we'll just check in with you and see how you're doing. Cheeto, are you going to say goodbye to everybody? <laughs> I think he sees his friends playing and wants to get in the action, but Cheeto says goodbye. So we have wrapped up blocks G, H, and I. We've done all the blocks on this outside border, and now we're going to be moving to a lot of flying geese next month. Month five is all about the flying geese and this cute little corner block right here. So that's what you have to look forward to. Don't worry, I'm going to make it easy and fun. We're going to do some cutting and some sewing. And if you haven't yet perfected the flying geese method by next month, you will be a pro. You guys have just blessed us more than I can begin to say, right, Mr. Kim? You betcha. Can I say lights, camera, action? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he really does. It, it makes it a lot of fun when we're shooting. We have had a great time today. I want to ask you if you wouldn't mind sharing this with, uh, with people, with your friends on your page and your social media. Get the word out. Please post pictures of your blocks, of your group sewing. If you have furry friends in your studio, we want to see them too. Post those pictures as we go along on the Janome Sewing Classroom page. And if you have any questions, post your questions. I'll do my best to get them answered. We just want to thank you so much for being on this Block of the Month Blitz 2 journey. I need to tell you, I'm already planning something very special for next year, but it's going to be a mystery. We're going to do something a little different next year, but it's going to be a lot of fun. 
I hope you're enjoying seeing this come together. You really should feel very proud of everything you've accomplished up to now. We really are past the halfway point. We're just going to be working on the flying geese, this block, and then we've got this great, big, beautiful block to do. But don't worry, I promise to walk you through every step of the way. So until next time, month five, we want to say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>